Warning for this episode of Animation Pilgrimage. We're talking about a film that has a lot of graphic violence. If that's something that turns you off, don't watch it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage. I'm Sean. And I'm Tanil. And, um... I've never watched a manga before. I mean, I've watched adaptations of mangas before. Certainly, and I've watched plenty of anime, but I've never watched a, a manga. manga. I mean, is it really watching... Like, all you're doing when you're reading a manga is you're watching it. Yeah, <laughs> but you can go at your own pace. Yeah. It doesn't have a set pace and also super zoomed in images. <laughs> Usually there's like, you know, page layout that's interesting. So... First thing, okay, first <laughs> thing I want to talk about with this... Uh, the, the name of the movie is Band of Ninja. Yeah, yeah, but before we even get to that, we watch this with our patrons. And so I just want to do a shout out to the patrons that, that stuck with us and watched that with us because it was an experience and I feel <laughs> like we all came together as like a group and bonded over this shared life experience that we went through together. So, uh, yeah. Band of Ninja. Band of Ninja is a 1967 film. From Japan. From Japan. It was two hours long. Yeah. A full two hours. And that's because it it's is... It's a direct adaptation. I don't even know if adaptation is the correct word. A direct telling of the manga Band of Ninja. Which has some other name, but I, I don't remember the Japanese name. Yeah. Um, but it's quite literally, they just went frame for frame for the... Panel... Panel, yeah, panel to panel of the entire... Frame to frame, panel to panel, same thing in this movie. Of the entire manga and just added sound effects and voice acting. See, oh, oh, you know what this is a perfect example of? Hmm. Why you shouldn't want direct translations of things. <laughs> Listen, y'all, whoever complains about adaptations of films cutting out your favorite parts of books, mangas, whatever. This is why you don't create direct adaptations of things because it doesn't work. You it's a have different to, medium. Yes, you have to change things when you go into a different medium. This is two hours long and it feels like seven. It feels very long. I couldn't even tell you what the plot is. I'm sure we're going to try here I, in just I, a little bit. I really want to try. All right. I'll let you try. I, I, I don't even want to go into it. But, <laughs> yeah, this this was uh, not something I would recommend to even fans of the manga because it just seems like like a way of butchering the story, even though, like, they really tried. Mm-hmm. Like, they tried to give motion to the panels to make it feel like they're moving. Like, they tried to flip to between scene. panels in what should be the correct timing, but it's mm -hmm. still, like, you know, one panel every half second or right. more. So it's and literally just add, a like, storybook. Good sound effects. The one part that's that's rather lacking, other than, you know, the fact that there's no animation, and it's not an actual adaptation, it's just... You know, of direct taking, telling. taking that is that there's no voice acting. It's all just like one narrator guy. Is there? No, there's there's characters that say lines, but I mean, because it's a manga, a lot of it is just a narrator telling you what's going on. So you have characters every now and again piping in with their own lines, but it's not very often. Yeah, not often enough. Changing subjects, I guess. Do we just want to, like, try to get into the plot summary? Go ahead. But please okay. make it b more brief than the movie itself. Okay. So, we have some random good-looking ninja guy. 
or samurai guy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is like Shing Tang Long or something. Shang Tae Long. Shang Tae Long? Okay. Either way, he's angry at the rich people, I think. There's Wait, like isn't he also like the son of maybe not. I I don't know. The plot is difficult to understand. If you I was reading this, I'm sure I'd be able to reread it a couple of times and figure out what exactly is going on. Either way, he, this manga was never ported to America by the way or this film for that matter. Um so that's why we can't get like a plot summary mm -hmm. of it to just read yeah either way main character i think yeah he's the main character yeah, he's trying to enter this other castle uh to take out the guy there because he feels that person has wronged him or his family or something and he's chopping down dudes because there's a lot of violence. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of violence. Too much violence. Um, and uh, he runs into a ninja lady, and they chop off each other's left arm. Yeah. Okay. And then this third ninja guy shows up, and this is the main antagonist, I guess, of the film? I don't know. I don't know. But he's just this smug guy with whooshy hair, and he just kind of looks <laughs> most of the time. And so the main character's unconscious. This guy captures him, and then this guy takes the main character under his wing and starts an uprising of the common folk against the rich people because there's a famine, and the bad guy, the, the rich people are uh, like taxing too much and so is this the part where shadow clan comes in no oh. no and then like they sack the castle and then they're going on a conquest of all the castles or something so there's just a lot of fighting and i couldn't tell you who's fighting who in the meantime the ninja lady uh gets conscripted into this other group of ninjas and she's like now one of the 10 ninjas that protects this one guy I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so the bad guy is like playing all these factions against each other because he's part of this group called Shadow Clan. Literally Shadow Clan. Um, Tiger Star was not in this movie. Zero out of ten. <laughs> all right. Um... And he's got like a group of like ten other guys that are in Shadow Clan, and they get a back. None of them cats. Zero out of ten. <laughs> there's a badger, and like there's a fish guy. I remember the fish guy. Yeah, there's a fish guy that, like, his mother is accused of witchcraft because she almost ate human but it was all like a misunderstanding so then she like fell into the sea she just happened to run across a human limb over a fire yeah. while these other people also happened to run across her very very strange set of circumstances mm -hmm. anyways they thought she was evil and they threw her into a river and she drowned and died so her son kept searching the river forever and turned into a fish man. Yeah. I don't know. They're I like remember. a bunch of ninjas with a bunch of weird powers. Like there's Badger Boy, who's Badger a Boy badger. was actually probably the most comprehensible part of the film, but I also could not tell you what exactly happened. I mean, he like likes animals and people hunt animals and he's not okay with it and he kills the people that hunt animals and then Well, no, like like at least with that part it's like, all right, we're going to tell a backstory about this guy. But why we're telling it right now, I couldn't tell you. No, I couldn't tell you why. But because this, but it's like, okay, we're telling a backstory of a character and it's and about <laughs> this boy who gets raised by a badger and he and the badger are really close. And then a hunter kills the badger, and then from that moment on, the boy is, like, seeking revenge Against on hunters. Humanity? So, see, like, that's... I, I got that. Like, I got it. I still don't know, like, exactly who this character was that they were yeah. telling the backstory of. I don't know when he showed up. Like, <laughs> I... 
Who is this guy in the future? Who knows? But one of them was raised by a badger. His best friend is the main antagonist guy who is apparently immortal? At the very least, he doesn't need a body. Yeah, his head gets chopped off at some point, and he's fine. Mm -hmm. He lives without a body for, like, a really long time. He's, like, stabbed in the face. They put him, his head on a spike. If you're wondering I, where our hero's been throughout this story, we don't know. He's gone most of the time. Yeah, he's, like, going with the group, and then, like, he gets attacked by bad guys, and, like, the group of, like, ten ninjas attack him, and, like, it's super unfair, and, like, he's just, he's, like, stepping on spikes and, like, they oh. beat the crap out of him. A yeah, this movie of, is uh, really violent. For no good reason. Yeah, just violence for violence sake. And then they don't finish him off because there's a horde of mice who yeah, are literally just trampling across. Oh, gosh, across. I forgot about that. How did I forget about the sudden horde of mice? Sudden horde of mice that apparently eat everything in its way. Human, animal, I plant, was trying to think of anything. what happened. I'm like, was he caught in a, like, sandstorm? It was no. something where, like, they had to bury him. So maybe it oh, was yeah. sand. There's this random girl that like... likes him. I don't know what her relation to this guy is other than she likes him. Yeah. So she buries him in the rocks because he's, like, unconscious. She runs off, and then there's a storm, and it washes everything away after the rats are gone. So then he just disappears from the story for, like, a year or two. How did I forget about the sudden swarm of rats? Yeah. It's like, okay. It's and like it, they're, they're doing other stuff, and then all of a sudden, like, it just rats. cuts. Rats. Just rats, and you see them like tear a deer apart, and like that's the biggest, the best explanation of it that you get before it's just like, all right, rats. Rats, we're going. Uh, either way, the backstory of all these bad guys we get for some reason, and then like the bad guy finds a woman who gets well birth because it's reach. a manga. Yeah, and in a manga that makes sense. Yeah, but like you get all the backstory at the same time yeah. for the whole group, which would well, be like. Isn't there one of them that's like? It's doing a backstory, and then in the middle of the backstory, it goes into the backstory of another character. And Who is it, also like, there and stuff. It's like, yeah. <sighs> I don't know. Shadow Clan is there, and they're bent on, I don't know, messing with things. You say Shadow Clan is there, like that means something. <laughs> they exist, and they're pulling the strings behind this whole, like, but I don't rich even know poor. if Shadow Clan is the good guys or the bad guys. Like I, I don't I have no idea. I think they're the bad guys because the Pretty Boy doesn't like them. I guess, but doesn't Pretty Boy also side with like join the group of people who murdered his wife? Oh, yeah, that's a thing we haven't brought up. The 10 ninjas with the ninja lady in it, they murder brutally uh, the main character's wife, who's the girl that buried him earlier in this story. Who, of course, we had to find out was pregnant. She was pregnant, and then they just... Not that it matters, because, it's, like, I've seen these stories before. I'm pregnant. Oh, I'm dead now. As soon as a lady says that she's pregnant, you're like, well, she's dead. And wouldn't you know it, five seconds later, the band of ninjas, the evil ninjas show up and brutally murder her and her child and I mean, of course, because that's how these stories always go down. Uh, yeah. Is just, like, brutalizing women just for the sake of giving the hero something to fight for. I hate that. I hate it, too. It's horrible. Mm-hmm. But, it, it, but, like, it's a trope. It is certainly a trope of this genre. And we're going to be seeing a lot of it. <sighs> Either way... Uh, but so they kill this dude's wife, uh -huh. and then they go to the dude who they tried to kill earlier in the story, and like, hey, Shadow Clan is evil. They killed your wife. Mm -hmm. Let's go kill him. Mm -hmm. Even though they're the ones that just killed her. Yeah. And then we have this whole series of like random people who I don't know who they are. I don't know if they're part of the 10 ninjas or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's random people going and trying to kill Shadow Clan and like kind of succeeding, kind of failing, By more way, often failing. Do we ever find out what was up with Fishman? Like did he die? Like I don't remember seeing him after his flashback or like after he got his backstory. I don't know. It was like he was introduced 
They gave his backstory, and then he was gone. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that being said, the ninja lady, before she goes to try to fight Ninja Clan, of course takes a bath completely naked. Yeah. Because you do that in this genre. That's another trope. Uh, of just women being naked in the bath for just... Because. TNA. Yeah. Either way, she goes and tries to fight. She gets brutally murdered. Does but it, How many times does she lose her arms? Uh, she loses her arm in the first part of the fight. And uh-huh. then... Or like the first part of the movie. And then in this, she loses that same arm again... I don't know if she got a new one or if it was just a fake one, but it gets chopped off again. Then she loses her other arm. Then she loses a leg and then she gets stabbed through like multiple swords. Right, right. Either way, she falls into their drinking hole and she had planned on this apparently because she had a bunch of poison just strapped to her body. Because, because like half of the ninja evil shadow clan dies of water poisoning. Okay. Like, literally everyone in Shadow Clan is dead except for the immortal guy and a kid and some random other member that I don't know if we were ever introduced to before. Either way, leader of Ninja Clan, or Shadow Clan. <laughs> Same thing, whatever. So, the band of the Ten Ninjas is dead now. Uh, I can't imagine this makes any more sense to our viewers. I mean, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Either way, Um, the immortal guy who's the leader of Shadow Clan is also the leader of the poor people insurrection. And they go to what I can only assume is the final castle. Uh And he goes in and he's talking to this old guy and he's like, the old guy's like, I shall never surrender. We'll kill all of you. And the bad guy's like, ah, that's all I needed to hear to kill you. And then the old man's like, but actually, pulls off his oh, face. Oh, yeah! And it's the main character, who we haven't seen for, like, forever. And the bad guy is like, huh? it's you! And all of us in the Patreon stream went, what? <laughs> what? Where, where did you come from? And then they fight for a while, but the main character's really bad. He's always, like, horribly outclassed. Either way, like, the rest of the army takes the guy down, and they quarter him. Like, pull him in multiple directions. They don't just quarter him. They they fucking tie each of his limbs to, like, a cannonball. And then shoot it off in opposite directions. No. Yes, they do. No, they just... They just a bunch of horses and pull them in different directions. No. I don't remember. No, you don't remember. They had the guy strapped down to be to be quartered, mm-hmm. and then they just go, boom, like like there's a big boom sound effect, and like limbs just go everywhere. <laughs> immortal guy's not so immortal anymore, I guess. <laughs> uh, either way, main character wanders into the, the the wilderness by himself because he's got nothing left whatever and also there's one member of shadow clan with the kid that was with shadow clan and epilogue story over i think (laughs) also there was a group of children who took over a village and were trying to run themselves and then just die there's like no setup for them they just come out of nowhere and then die like oh like three chapters later they just go back to the village and everyone's dead isn't it so dark and edgy, Sean? Oh, yeah. I cut myself on all this edge. Yeah, this is just violence for violence sake. I and mean, I know people told, like that. If it was told competently, like, I, I'd be less harsh on the violence for violence sake because, you know... If there's actually a story to go with it. But yeah. the story was so unfollowable in the form that we got it because we don't speak Japanese. So mm-hmm. we're just going off of YouTube's really bad automatic translations, which made following the story hard to begin with. And then just because it's a direct telling of the manga it doesn't work well in a movie form right 
On a positive note, though, the artwork's really nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. The creator, whatever his name is, uh, putting it here on the screen. Yep. This guy, uh, he does very good art. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people really enjoyed this, and that's why it got this movie-ish adaptation. This apparently, though, is not one of his, like, better well-known works, though. Oh, interesting. Was this made before the others, or...? I think it was made after... question mark? Okay. We'll need to put a little more information here on the screen. I mean, I'll try. It's really hard to find information about this this or this manga hmm. um, that's not in Japanese. Okay. But an interesting thing about the author of this is he doesn't have anything to do with this film. This okay. was directed by somebody else. I'll put their name here. I don't want to butcher their Japanese name. Um, and, and I think basically like just a couple of guys did this and like filmed the manga. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, the, the actual author of the manga itself is credited as the pioneer of, oh gosh, I, I was practicing Gekiga. Gekiga, I think is what it's called. Okay. Which is like adult manga. Okay. So violence and death and murder. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, now that I've seen this, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've seen this story, like, in a Japanese manga or whatever mm -hmm. a million times. It's like, oh, yeah, this had to start somewhere. Uh-huh. Here we go. Like, this is definitely a genre. Mm -hmm. A genre of lots and lots and lots of violence. Mm -hmm. Well, and they almost always take place in, in this sam feudal Japan. The fe feudal Japan samurai times. Yeah. I mean, that's a good place to put it because there was a lot of violence in that time. Yeah. And samurai and ninja are interesting. Yeah, it's just... It's interesting to look at it... Like, from, like, probably the Western equivalent of this is doing either, is, okay, it's either one of two categories. Okay. It's either very similar to how we look at, like, Renaissance times, but we tend to look at Renaissance times as more of, like, an age of fairy tales. Mm-hmm. And we tend to, like, make it more squeaky clean <laughs> than <laughs> what it was. Okay. Or, and I think this is a more correct um, uh, comparison mm -hmm. is westerns. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It's mm -hmm. like it's the, I mean they're very different genres, but like the the uh, gritty realism the, 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 the idealism of these the idealism of like these single heroes like taking down this like big imposing force. Mm -hmm. But just like the over-saturation of, like, this specific time period in this scenario mm -hmm. done to death. Yeah. Like, those, like, feudal Japan and the Western... And American Westerns. ...are very similar in those regards. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't... Well, yeah, and I just... I, <laughs> I feel like they're they're so similar... Culturally, too. Mm -hmm. Like, like westerns were more violent, even though, like, compared, compared to, to this, this <laughs> the westerns are, like, for babies. But... <laughs> oh, no, you shot a man. <laughs> oh, no. You didn't even show it. <laughs> this one's like, no, I'm going to show you a rat eating a man alive. <laughs> I'm going to show you a decapitated woman's head for fun. Oh, boy. Yeah, I hope anyone, like, we put that warning at the beginning of the episode, but I hope anyone that's queasy about that stuff did not watch this episode. Feel I'm not going to put anything yeah, put anything visual, yeah. visually graphic on, up on here, because yeah, it, I, it gets, I just don't want that up on the channel. It's too squidgy. Yeah. Uh, just take our word for it. Like, 
Like if body horror is your thing, all the more power to you, but you can go watch that on your own time. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to see it here, folks. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say about this movie because it's barely a movie. Mm hmm. Jeez. I mean, I don't think we have anything else to say. Yeah, I don't think we'll. We we'll probably won't even see anything else like this. Um, exactly. I mean, we'll see stuff of this genre, but we but, won't uh, see like, like a directly someone just playing. God, I hope a not. manga. <laughs> I hope that you know we all learned our lesson from looking at this, and nobody ever attempts to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's Band of Ninja. Next week we have. Another Rankin Bass film. Whoopee. Oh joy. We have Mad Monster Party? Question, question mark, mark is in the title. Why is it our question mark? Rankin Bass. Are you questioning your own film? <laughs> You're making me. That's not a good sign. Well, see us see us next week. Yeah. That happens. Next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>